Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Metal Magdalene with Jet right here on Metal Messiah Radio. Tonight, I have a special guest with me back on the show. I have Hank Sherman from Denner Sherman. Welcome back to the show, Hank. Hi, everybody. This is Hank. Hi. I, I almost forgot what band you were with again. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, it took- <laughs> yeah it is a little, you know, Hank Sherman from Denner Sherman. That, you know, of course, sounds a little funny, but, you know, that's... <laughs> That, that, that's what we chose to, you know, name this output here, so, oh well. well so, so, Hank, for the people that don't know about the band, just tell us a, a little bit of, you know, history on, on how Denner Sherman was created and, and why you guys started this thing up. Yeah, so, so um, me and Michael, uh, you know, met each other back, let's say, 1979. That's, you know, where we got into the same band called Bratz, and... A few years later, we got into form Merciful Fate with King Diamond. Had some cool years with that release, Melissa, and Don't Break Those. And now, here we are today, me and Michael still together <laughs> and are bringing that, you know, classic uh, sound that we, only me and Michael have. And, you know, this is what we, you know, one of the parts that we bring into this band. And, of, of course, also the songwriting. Um, and the reason why you know why we are doing it is like because we wanted to celebrate ourselves uh, because of the 30th anniversary for M- Melissa and we, we we did create a video for YouTube to our fans playing a, a snippet of all the songs on the album and then out of that you know that idea surfaced you know why not do a band and we all you know we know so many cool musicians so we we, we did a, a nice cool selection of very cool guys and uh, here we are already on to the uh, second album release uh, within eight months so mm-hmm. there so, you go so hey tell tell us all who these cool guys that are in the band yeah uh, it's it's five individual uh, guys musician experience musician and uh, the criteria for for them even being considered is that they need to have a signature. They need to stand out from everyone else. They need to be talented or something like that. So, <laughs> you know, so so Sean, you know, he got the approval stamp. <laughs> you know, we like his tone to his voice. He, you know, he can go high pitch screaming like, you know, we really like uh, personally. And he can do horror vocals. He can do melodic uh, stuff. And he's a strong uh, character, has a cool personality. Uh, he's a cool front figure and he's smart. He can handle, you know, the press and all that. So all those elements are very important being the front uh, singer. Mm-hmm. So if you're a weak guy, then, you know, the band doesn't move that far uh, other than releasing the album and mm-hmm. that's it, right? So so, so, so he passed the criteria. Snow Shaw, you know, that was, you know, we really wanted Snow Shaw. He's like, to me and Michael, you know, one of the coolest uh you know, uh, drum out there, you know, with that snowy short touch. I mean, it's not mm-hmm. like just standard patterns issue. He's like really his own uh, world and delivering world-class drumming. And and the last, uh, you know, guy, our bass player, Mark Grabowski, 20, I have been knowing him for 20 years. He's living in uh, Denver, Colorado. He's like really, really a talented musician and extremely, uh, you know, cool bass player. Uh, with a high level and uh, you know that's you know all these elements put together including ourselves me and Michael uh, you know this makes a cool combination of uh, of a band I think and uh, everyone everyone had the freedom to record whatever they kind of felt you know put into the to the songs because that's that always make heavy musicians, you know, they are not restricted, you know, oh, you can only play the roots or oh, you have to play this and that, you know, so we, we everyone had fun doing this record here. And, you know, we we mentioned a little bit about the, the uh, EP came out eight months ago. So what have yeah. been now that everybody's had plenty of time to hear it? What have been, you know, like the reactions to, you know, a lot of these um, fans of yours are fans from other bands that you guys have been in. And now that you've got this conglomerate of these great musicians together with Denner Sherman, what have been some of the fan reactions to this band now? That has just been phenomenal. I mean, we really didn't know what to expect. Maybe we would be slaughtered by all our loyal fans. Oh, <laughs> this doesn't sound like Merciful Fate, or Sean doesn't sing like King, or stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But, you know, 
people have taken it totally different and seeing this as a new band uh, and maybe uh, they they feel some like uh, excitement going on because of course there is some some familiar sound picture and there you know obviously me and Michael are you know having a cool guitar sound together that is like us right and some signature guitar leads from Michael and myself and uh, so of course all that is familiar from you know for, with with old fans and the whole uh, old classic metal 80s type of music uh, inspired from the 70s I mean that uh, seems to be a genre that uh, people apparently like and uh, so uh, we have been treated really well. And that's good, I guess, <laughs> you know, because it's like you said, when you're starting something new and people know you from these old bands, you know, you get ready for, like you said, oh, you don't sound like this, but you're lucky that uh, everybody enjoys it. And it is, you know, yeah. I think it's like you said, too, you get the right bunch of guys. How could they not enjoy it, Hank? Yeah, and, you know, and... <laughs> And exactly, and you know, uh, uh, and and that really, I mean, like I said, that that really motivated us, you know, because we, you know, we didn't have any expectation, and everyone was surprised about, you know, all the cool reviews. Even Mister Blade, you know, out in, in in California, was like, "Wow, this is this is going well," you know. So so they were taken by surprise <laughs> of the reaction and the sales from the EP. So, I mean, we of course we we believe in ourselves, and you know all along and with the songwriting and, and, and all that so but uh, you know so even like the record label you know was a pride so 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 we we off to a good start and you know following up with the full length album having eight great songs that uh, we have been working on um, I think we, we, we took it some steps deeper into the songwriting a lot of layers you know more epic songs included Lots of signature in all of the songs, so I, I'm sure uh, you know the hardcore metal fans of classic metal and the uh, loyal fans of Metal Fate will certainly enjoy this album. And now on June 24th, you guys are going to be releasing your first full-length album, uh, Masters of Evil. Now, are you guys the Masters of Evil, Hank, or what's going on there? Uh, you know, yeah, <laughs> you know th that title could, you know. That, that could be it, right? But, you know, <laughs> considering our background, but, you know, you know, me and Michael, I think, see ourselves as, you know, musicians and, <laughs> you know, just have our, you know, style. And, uh, you know, actually it was Sean uh, Peck who came up with that idea, you know, why not call it Masters of Evil? And surprisingly enough, no one in the world within the heavy metal genre had that title uh, taken so it's like, okay uh, masters of evil and michael was really into it and i say okay that I, I if michael is into it sean you know and you, okay i i i think it's pretty cool too and um so sometimes you have to Sometimes you just have to do things. I mean, you cannot think too deep into, oh, maybe this is too a little, <laughs> you know, on the top title or, you know, maybe calling a song something with Satan is a little like childish and stuff. But I mean, it, you know, we just do it. And, and that's a way uh, where you create great moments in, in, in your career. <laughs> now, after, after, you know, writing Satan's Tomb, how did you guys approach the writing of Masters of Evil to kind of follow up Satan's Tomb? Yeah, I, uh, I was uh, on a roll, you know, so, so when we had delivered the Masters uh, tapes to Missile Blade Records as, a, as early as maybe a April last year, mm -hmm. I, just, I just continued to, to you know, because I was in a, in a cool move of songwriting and Create, create really creative uh, time frame I had there, you know, period. So I just started uh, jamming out cool riffs and idea, and then we, me and Sean, did the foundation of three of the songs that actually are on the album. Uh, then I uh, resumed the songwriting in I think October, and so October, November, December, or the rest of the song were completed and you know, uh, you know, fine tweaked and tuned and all that. So. So some of the songs are actually uh, composed right after the EP, and um, then I took a break uh, to do press and all that, and then we went back into the songwriting. So so they're, they're fairly fresh, most of the album, I would say. 
and um, and the, the, you know, so so to follow up the EP, you mm -hmm. know, how do you do that? Mm -hmm. do you just copy the four songs, okay, you know, but you know, I have with thirty-five year, years of uh, songwriting experience, you know, we have a big spectrum of doing anything we feel like, and uh, you know. Uh, so so I just dig deep and of course I have a you know a vault with a lot of riffs you know that I can choose from but I prefer to, to make it fresh and new so uh, all songs are very different from each other so there's not two two songs that are, are in the same style but it of course within the classic metal uh, genre but you know we have anything for really heavy stuff we have songs that are you know based on my old recipe that I used for Satan's Fall when I did that song, uh, mm -hmm. the music for that one. So, you know, I'm using some of my old recipes uh, for the, some of these songs. And, and um, you know, so, so it is very much, um, you know, me and Michael's signature uh, all over. And then, of course, added with, all the, with the other guys. Now, tell us a little bit about the cover. -up. Now, the, the guy that did this cover is the same one that did the cover for the EP, right? Exactly. So... So what happened was that I, you know, the Satan's Tomb cover, I think was so metal and I got the opportunity to buy it from, a, from an American guy who actually bought it from the Swedish uh, original painter. <laughs> so I bought it and said, wow, you know, I told myself, you know, one day I know this will come in handy. And then uh, that day would, was when we decided to, you know, to record that EP, I already had the cover. <laughs> And uh, the familiar thing is that, you know, Thomas all, also painted Melissa Carver. He also did paint the uh, Don't Break Those. He also did paint the Nine uh, album from Merciful Fate. He also did paint some King Diamond albums. So, you know, we were very familiar with his style. And when we had to do the full length, I went back to, to Thomas and say, Hey, Thomas, we are now about to look, have to look into artwork for, for our full length. Would you happen to have, you know, some artwork floating around? And... He sent me two, uh, two paintings, and uh, the one were the uh, what it became like the Masters of Evil uh, artwork, and the other was some more like our uh, our logo with some alien creature, you know, creepy <laughs> creature in the background. So, and there was no doubt. I mean, you know, the the Masters of Evil cover, of course, has a lot of reminiscence of Don't Break Those, Melissa, mm -hmm. and then part of Satan's Tomb. But on the other hand, me and Michael were an essential part of Merciful Fate uh, back in the 80s, and, you know, why not show that, you know, via this cover as well? And it fits the music perfectly, actually. It does. I, I think so, too. And, wh and what formats um, is this going to be released on it? Are you guys going to do a vinyl or anything like that? Of course. Yay! <laughs> you know, it, it, we have a vinyl in two different colors. We have a slipcase version with golden foil, you know, so wow. the logo is golden foil, you know, <laughs> and uh, we have a patch inlay, we have a poster inlay, we have, um, you know, regular CD and obviously Apple Music, Spotify and all that, you know, mm -hmm. and then uh, streaming and, you know, downloads, yeah, sure. So, you know, all, uh, all formats, uh, you know, out there and, you know, so Mr. Blade seems to be really supporting it, especially Europe. I mean, the, you know, of course they know which territory better sells vinyls and stuff. So, mm -hmm. but the the European market seems to be uh, offering more variations, uh, you know, on the album than the, the U.S. market for some reason. But hmm. you know, whatever. I'm I'm not the record label, you know. <laughs> right, right, right. And, and to to follow up the release of the album, now are you guys planning on you know playing out or doing any shows anywhere? No, nah, we actually uh, stopped touring like you know twenty years ago. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> No, no, you know, of course, you know, now, you know, we've gotten so old, so we can, you know, can't hand, handle it anymore, but <laughs> no, uh, so, so two shows are confirmed, two festivals uh, in, in northern of Europe, mm -hmm. then September, it looks like we are trying, you know, we'll try to, to put together a European tour, mm -hmm. uh, October, looking into a, a US tour, that might be the, uh, the East Coast first, maybe, including Chicago. Uh, then we will come back and do the West Coast, uh, Mexico, uh, and then later in November, we it looks like we, we might go to South America. So, you know, we have the booking agents uh, in different territories uh, working at it right now. And, of course, we are 
shooting for the festivals in uh, 2017. Sure. Mm-hmm. And then we're looking at a new album in, at, in you know, maybe autumn 2017, right? Mm-hmm. So, so stuff like that, yeah. And festivals are good, too, because then you hit a bunch of people at once. You know, people are coming from all over to see you. And like you said, we ain't getting any younger, you know? So <laughs> No, no. You know, the, the, the only thing with festivals, you know, I, I, I've been touring, you know, a lot with different oh, bands yeah. and all that, but... You know, the, the worst thing I hate about those festivals is, you know, when the band is supposed to go on 12 a.m., you know, the the sun is shining and you stand there, you know, dressed in leather, trying to look cool. And, you know, it, it really doesn't look cool at all. You don't have your, your light show and, you know, everything looks like, you know, weird, right? So, uh, you know, so... Everyone, of course, wants to play, you know, after uh, after the sun is down and everything is dark, pitch mm-hmm. black, and, and you can take advantage of all your, you know, flamethrower stuff going right, on and right. rockets and, you know, all that, right? <laughs> but, uh, you know, so hopefully we will get some, some good positions so we are not, you know, doomed to play those <laughs> shitty times. <laughs> so, in the middle of the afternoon, ah, who the hell cares? Everybody will probably be so drunk at those things, nobody will notice anyway. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. So, oh. hey, you know, thank you for uh, taking the time to come on the show tonight to tell us about the new album, Denner Sherman, Masters of Evil, out on Metal Blade Records. And all the best to you, and good luck out there, and hopefully you get some good spots on those uh, festivals. I I will cross my fingers, you know, thank you for having me and uh, my pleasure.